Fitness Proof Podcast. I am here with one of our all-star members, Laura Ajeb. I said that right, correct? Ajeb. Ajeb. Oh, <laughs> man, we've been saying it up. Ajeb. It's hard. Well, it's going to be. It's going to be Taylor. It's going to be Taylor. It's so easy. That's way easy. Right? It's so easy. So, Laura, can you introduce yourself to everybody who's listening and who's watching and tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, I'm Laura Ajeb, soon be Taylor. And I've been here since, been coming to BOB since. Oh, I actually don't know. October. October. Yeah. Yeah. October 2020. Yeah, October 2020. Mm -hmm. So it'll be close to a year soon. Yeah. Yeah. You've made some pretty amazing strides. We just we just talked about the numbers, right? We'll yeah. go back to that and go back to yeah. that. But um, but I wanna I wanna like really you have a really interesting story and I think a lot of people can be inspired by it. So when we first met, let's take it back to when we first met, when we first reached out, I want to hear the story and the journey leading up to when you reached out to us. So tell me about you, Phyllis. Yeah, yeah. So when I reached out to you, you just decided to postpone our wedding because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I was extremely, extremely stressed and like stress eating and I was at like the heaviest I'd been in a long time. Uh, and just feeling really discouraged about like trying to get in shape. Um, I had been out of it for so long and I came with baggage to bring to you. And um, some of that was entrapment syndrome and compartment, which are both in my legs and one worse than the other. One is always swollen and it gets bigger in the heat and just terrible. And then also just pain down the side of my legs. I've dealt with this ever since I can remember. When did it all start? Um, I mean, I think it really showed up in middle school when I tried out for cross country and I ran through it, um, which obviously is not the smart thing to do. You shouldn't <laughs> run through it for years and years of cross country. And at the time, I went to doctors and they didn't know what it was at the time, uh, probably because it was a combination. Compartment is was behind my knee and the muscle is pushing on the artery and then the other the other is the um or did i say entrapment entrapment is what's behind the knee and then the compartment is on the other on the sides of the legs running from by the knee down to the ankle and i don't think they knew what either of those things were so ran through it and then maybe a couple of years ago i was on a business trip and my foot just swelled up my right foot not my left <laughs> um, just one and went to a bunch of doctors they thought it was vein issues they thought it was um, like just then they found out compartment and they were like you could get the surgery which is basically making little like uh, cuts in your tendons to open it up the compartment so it releases the pressure um, it's really painful and you could do it but you could Get it again and so i was like i don't want to get surgery and have to get it over again so i did the main surgeries because i thought it was a just um like a blood flow issue and i did three of them and nothing they they do ablations which is like going into the vein and lasering it so that you don't use the vein anymore so like your body recirculates and did nothing for the swelling did nothing for the pain um and then they found entrapment, and that was behind my knee with the muscle pushing on it. So I did surgery for that, and you know, a like great big scar down the back of my leg for it. And they took out all of this um, scar tissue from the back of my leg and cut some of the muscle so that the artery could freely move again, and it does, but swelling's still there. So basically, the conclusion is probably like lymphedema. So like a ton of different random things that they're just dealt with. So I brought that all to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone here is really positive about it. Like, oh, it's okay. You can do all of this. And I can say that in any other gym or like workout class, because I had done like bar class and Pilates and yoga, and like yoga probably was the least painful, but um, like other gyms, other personal trainers, um, spin classes, and they had all been really painful. Wow, you tried them all? You tried yeah. all those things? Oh yeah. Holy moly. Yeah, and I really had like a certification in like a yoga, being a yoga instructor, because I thought, oh, that's at least something I can do. 
Um, and that was one of the few things I could do. Uh, but even walking was painful at a certain point. And I think because like having the extra weight on my body also created more pressure. It's like walking sometimes I'd have like really bad pain down my leg. And then I and then like here, like it's definitely slow to like get used to like slow progress. Um, because in the past I had done like you go run like for 10 miles. And I can't believe I could run 10 miles back then. I can't believe you run 10 miles. I know, the oh pain. God. You know like the, the saying like runner's high? Yeah. And like you get it after a certain you used to joke in cross country to get it at like six miles. So like you would I would get it at six miles and I'd be like, okay, I can handle it. And like I would have that pain, but it wouldn't be as bad. Oh man. So you would just run right through it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Races, all of those things just run through it. So now I don't like I don't I avoid running like the plague because I don't want to do that again. <laughs> so like biking, walking, that kind of stuff yeah. instead. So what was it that like made you decide to take it the next step? Like what what in your mind said, you know what, I need to do something different when we, when you like you decided to reach out? I think I mean I wasn't getting results I wanted. I was doing like different diets. I had done like whole 30, I think I told you about that one. And I had saw I had seen results from that diet. Like I had lost a good amount of weight, but then I, lose? I think I lost like twenty pounds. Wow. Yeah. 20 pounds, like we didn't know what it was, we just lost 20 pounds, right? Yeah, oh just yeah, like, I had no clue if it was what it was. Yeah, water, water weight, uh, like water, whatever. Like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, just lost it, and then I kept it off for like a month or two, and then I got it back. Mm. So, yeah, so at like the point that I reached out to you, I was like, now I kind of have more time to get ready for my wedding and like I care about how I look in those photos and when I share them with family yeah. and maybe like future kids be like, look at her mom, she's actually like looks good in her yeah. wedding photos, right? Like that's that's what I wanted and I was like, I'm not doing it on my own, I'm not getting there, so I think I need some help. And so I had actually, I had done my research. I had reached out to a bunch of personal trainers in the area and like I told them the issues and they all were like, not sure what they were. So that was a bad, that was a really bad sign. I was like, if you don't know what it is, then obviously you don't know how to like work around it. So then I found here and like, if you're willing to like find out what it is, then that's good too. And like, that's what I saw here. And that was not what I saw in other places. And so I avoided that like the plague. <laughs> Just like running. Avoided like the plague now. <laughs> right. It all went to like this box and I'm like, nope. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> good. You do a great job not name dropping. Just like describing, not saying those <laughs> places. That's, that's great. It's good. I can't remember the name. <laughs> <of those. laughs> that's even better. Just remember our name. That's good. But, um, but Laura, you, you have such a unique journey for you that I'm sure other people can relate to because we all have these struggles, we all have these things that we deal with that are putting us in pain, that are that we're dealing with on a regular basis, whether it's been a couple of days, a couple of months, a couple of years, and you're in your like years of dealing with it and then having to work around it and figure new things out around what you're doing while we're still trying to maintain a healthy lifestyle and see the changes you want to, especially with the wedding coming up. So when is the wedding? September 17th. September 17th, so. which like by the state when you're listening to this, if it's when it comes out, it's probably gonna be right around that time. Like, it's, the yeah, I'm very. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I might be in Hawaii. You might be in Hawaii this time, but uh, but you'll still be looking good, feeling good, moving great, and no, hopefully, no pain at all. Because where are so where are you now? Tell me, tell me about the experience and about where you are now. Well, I wouldn't say I'm a morning person right now, but I think I actually might be turning into that because I actually come in the six thirty class, which is crazy. Yeah. Like I'm not perfect. Today I missed. That's okay. So, <laughs> that um, I, I slept right through it. But um, your body needs to sleep. That's what it was. Your body said, "You know what? I need to sleep." And you said, yeah. "Okay, body, I'll listen to you." Yeah, but this is the longest I've done consistently a program, unless you count like high school, which mm -hmm. doesn't count. <laughs> um, and. I track my food, which I never, I thought I was so resistant. I was so, so angry when, like, actually angry. I did not want to do it. <laughs> I know. And, like, I think you can see, you can see my emotions all over my face and my open book. And you can see that I don't 
want to do it, but I did it. Yeah. And I've been doing it now for months. Yeah. And now it's just like another habit. And I can kind of see like where I am. And it's really awesome to see like, oh, like I've consistently kept at the calories that we're trying to track. Yeah. And I know what foods like I can just do it in my head now. Isn't that so I'm like, cool? oh, here's the meal, here's the meal, here's the meal. Um, and there's all sorts of like non scale related like value to this. Uh, like, um, even my fiance has lost weight from this. Yeah. And I just like, I feel, I actually do feel more energy, which is crazy. And I feel more energy after our workouts here. So, like, I actually feel ready to go to work now. <laughs> And not just exhausted and like grabbing coffee. So there you go, boss. You can thank me, send us a check, or you can just come in and be a member here, Laura Boss. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's good. <laughs> that's awesome, though. So for you, you've seen a lot of progress, and I love these of the non scale victories because that's really what we're working towards. Like the scale is, is part of the journey, but it's not the focus. And when you made that shift, when you decided that, you know what, I am going to start to track, just remember, you just started week by week. Like, let's try yeah. one week. It was one week, and you did it. Reluctantly, but you did it. And then it was like week yeah. two, you did it. And then by like week three or four, we started to see like little changes happening. And I just kept saying, like, just keep it up, just keep it up. And you did. And now look at us, months later, you've stayed consistent with it. And yeah, and the days happen, so like, there are bad days. There are oh, days, the days happen, yeah. yeah. Like the, like, traveling or um, going on a bachelorette party <laughs> yeah. um, and all of those. And then like, real, it's actually really hard to like get back on track. That's one thing I've learned is like, if you're consistent, then you don't have to like do these huge like ups and downs. And it is so painful to come back from Las Vegas and be like, oh, I'm tracking again. Like if I didn't get off of it, maybe it been like, it was worth it, but it was hard to like get back into that. Yeah. So. But to your point, when you came back, do you remember what happened when we did our in-body when you saw? You were, I don't. You were, you were, I remember. You were actually down even more than when you before you had left. It's because of the consistency, and it's that it, it's the uh, the compounding effect of creating this habit that is part of your lifestyle. And when you have this lifestyle habit, even when you get off track by going away for a bachelorette party or traveling for a weekend away for a vacation or the summertime cookouts, whatever it is, we're always gonna have these off days or weeks or periods of time. The matter is, if you got right back to it. Yeah, it's a little difficult to get back into the group, but I'm sure it was only a few days to get back into it, and then yeah. you fell into place. And that will give you. Yeah, so let's so, so talk about the um, the changes, the progress that you've made in, in, in less than a year. In less than a year. In, in less like, than a year. In like probably only like six months, because we really, the first few months were like not really as focused. Just yeah, like the first out. few months was just, the tracking was literally just tracking what I did, right? Mm -hmm. Like tracking what I ate, no changes. Then I think we got serious, so like October, I came in, November, we were like just starting to track. December is Christmas and every possible yeah. holiday, right? right? And then like truly, like I think truly I started January. Yeah. Is when I started to actually track my calories and bring it down. And like when I brought it down, like I still was like drinking beer on, on weekends. Mm -hmm. um, and like going out with friends and everything else. COVID safe. Yeah, that's um, right. Uh, but the change is, if you want to talk about like how much I've lost now. Yeah. So 18.1 pounds. Yeah. Um, or, I'm sorry, of, of uh, body fat. Yes, that's the biggest win. It's not that you, and like you've been able to maintain your lean body mass. You've been able to maintain your muscle mass. Lean body mass, you've improved your water intake, and you have gone down 18 pounds of body fat. And so, for people who are watching this on the video, I need to step up and I wish I could have somebody hand this. Look. <laughs> That's three, almost three and a half of these things. Yes. You've lost three and a half of these from your body. Like, what, dude? This, if you're, yeah. you can't see this because you're listening to the podcast, but I'm holding up a five pound replica of body fat that jiggles like it and everything. <laughs> and Laura lost three, almost three and a half of these. Basically three and a half of these, which is crazy. Crazy. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. Dude. So yeah. awesome. So I'm going to put the fat back. <laughs> I just, I had to, I had to show it because yeah. when you see it, when you feel it, 
it's it's incredible. So tell me how you feel now. How are things going for you now? You seem to have more energy. You're feeling more. It's becoming more of a habit now. You wake up in the mornings. So what are the other wins? What are the other big things, improvements that you felt, Tony? Yeah, you know, like weird, like um, physically. I've noticed that like my hair is better, my nails are better, <laughs> like everything is better. My skin is better, um, my sleep is better, um, clothes obviously fits better. Like everything, like COVID clothes, I didn't like I never tried on any of the things that I wore to work for a really long time and I started to try them all on, they all fit like so nicely and I'm like, oh perfect, it feels good. Yeah. So that's so yeah. awesome. So for you, the journey from struggling through middle school, high school running, and then trying all the different gyms and the different diet plans and all these different things, you you have a story that so many people can relate to. And that's why I really wanted to have you come in and talk. I'm so glad you're here because this is valuable. So if, if you could give, I'm gonna do a little commercial. I'm gonna say a little bit of things, but if you could condense your journey, I, I wanna hear about a story. Maybe, you know what, I'm jumping ahead. Let me back, I got back up, back up. Tell me the story of when it finally clicked for you with with everything you've been doing for these past like four or five six months. What like what was that finally clicked? What was it that you did or like a skill you can share or a tip that you have that worked well for you that you're like oh that's what it was. Well what do you have? What do you have? Give me something. It's a big ask. Um... I, I, I wish I had like this really awesome story where it's like I woke up and I just knew like it wasn't that it was like I'm tired and fed up and angry about this and I'm gonna freaking do something about it yeah like, that's like what it was for me and I think it was I think it's probably because I postponed my wedding and I was mad so and like I was ready to make some changes and I was like this time around we're gonna party even harder we're gonna do even more like and then this, and then I was like, and I want to feel and look my best that day, and so on. So maybe that's really where the moment like hit. Yeah. And then sticking with it, like I would say, like that wasn't like as strong of a moment as that as getting started. Like it just was like comfortable. I'm like the I'm not very sporty, so like I really. It's, if you put me in uncomfortable situations long enough where it's like play kickball or try and catch this ball, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> and you never did that to me. Like, it was always very comfortable and I never felt awkward. And so I just kept coming and then I felt like comfortable, I think. So it's like, now I'm just comfy right yeah. here. So I think that's like the, what clicked, I guess. What, what would you say were the, like, the things that gave you that comfort? What were some of the experiences for you? Um, Definitely you, Nick, um, and definitely everyone else in the gym. No one is like competing with everyone else, and I see a lot of that. I saw a lot of that in other gyms. It was like, I do this, what do you do? Here, it's just like everyone's doing their own thing, um, and everyone's really friendly, and the conversation is never around, like, what's your goal here? It's just like, how's your day? Um, and so that kind of led to the comfort there. And there was never anything I couldn't do um, in our workouts. And like if it, and when I say couldn't do, it's like I could do it with a modification, right? And other people were doing modifications, and that made me feel really good because I'm like, okay, like my legs are all messed up, but there's someone next door to me that's like got a knee issue who's also doing modifications, and it made me feel like, okay, I'm not the only one here that has like something going on right so that's it that's perfect and that's and, and that's exactly what i was hoping you would say because it is the the community and that you were able to have your own modifications for you on what you need but so is the person next to you because everyone who's here has something going on whether they show it or not it's whether it's a full yeah. knee replacement to your left or it's just uh, a shoulder pain on the right it's we have things going on and to be able to understand that you're not alone in it and that you can do your own thing at that own time, but in a shared space, I think that's really powerful. Yeah. That's really powerful. Cool. It's very rare, I would, th I would think, to find that, to feel really comfortable. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm gonna jump in now. So I'm gonna give a little commercial. While I say my commercial to the listening people who are listening and watching, I want you to think about what you would say to the person who was just like you a year ago, when you had gotten to the point where you were talking about how you just like, felt fed up. What would you say to that person now 
about what you can do and what you've seen accomplished, okay? So if you're listening to us on a podcast, whatever podcasting platform you're listening to, please make sure you give us a five-star review if you think it's worth it, right? If you think we deserve a five-star review, give us a five-star review. Um, it really helps a lot. It's a free podcast. We're really trying to reach more people and help more people. And the way we do that is with your five-star reviews or with your written reviews. If you don't like it, throw me an email, matt at bentonbetter.com, and tell me what we can do to improve, what we can do to talk about, to give you more value going forward. And if you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube, hi, thank you. Make sure you swing by our YouTube channel, click the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up on this video, and leave a comment below about Laura's journey. Tell us what you've been struggling with. Can you relate to Laura and her journey? Have you gone through the wedding jitters and all the different things leading up to it, the anxiety that comes with it? Tell us in the comment section, we wanna hear about it. So now, Laura. What would you yeah. do? What would you say? Give me something. Give me something strong. So, I would say like a, a quote. I have a lot of things, but I have to narrow all it down. No, say them all. I want to hear them all because we need to. It's important. Right? Yeah, it's important. yeah. All the diet culture is such a lie, um, and it is just crazy how much stuff is thrown at you in your face about it. And it took me so much longer than it should have to totally believe you and like break my walls down and be like. Yeah, this diet thing, like this, the whole 30s, the keto, like all of these things are not what's going to like actually keep it off for you. Or like also like your number on the scale is not actually like what it means to be healthy. And that one I still struggle with. But like these things, if I could have just like knocked down these, I guess I'm going to call them lies, like the lies quicker, it would have been a lot easier for me. And if you can knock those lies down and come in with an open mind and say, like, maybe what I thought about health and fitness isn't true, then I could, I can jump in here and just learn. So once I did that, things, things got easier and more comfortable. So good. So good. I love it. You had more than I said. You had more. You had more there. <laughs> what else did you have? There was more to that. I know you got more. Give me some more. I want that. I want that last little bit, Laura. You got your Spitfire. I know you got it. I talk so much. Yeah. Do it. It's so, um, good. It's so good. They love it. They're gonna love it. Yes. Um. You know, I. The other things are when you come in here, it's just patience, and I don't have patience. Like I don't. I can't stand it. I want things now, done now. Like maybe that's why I work in like program management, right? Like I want things done on a schedule and it's not a schedule and it's like a lot of ups and downs and zigzags and sideways and like how your progress goes. And like there are days where I can't lift the weight that I lifted like two weeks ago and I get really discouraged. But like those, you just have to realize that your path is all over the place and it's not just like constantly like progress, which is tough for me to, to learn, but I learned that here. Beautiful. That was so great. Did you have anything else in there? Else no, in there? I think you've drained me. That was good. That was so good. That was a great way to end it because progress is not one direction. It goes yeah. up and down. It goes side to side. The journey to wherever you're going is a journey. The destination is always going to be out there in the distance. It's a matter of you going along that journey and just staying the course and knowing that wherever you end up going is going to bring you that much closer to that space and to that place. And fitness yeah. is a journey. And like, don't let, and even though people say this, I've heard those, there's slogans, there's t-shirts that say these things. And it's like, I guess like the last thing I would say for someone to know when they come in here is that just let it, just learn it for yourself then. Cause what's more than it's like believing, like you'll see it happen instead of like, like seeing is believing, like you'll see it happen for yourself. So even if you don't believe those slogans, which I did not. You will believe them after you like experience it. Yeah. So. Oh, Laura, that's so good. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And thank you for listening in. We'll catch you next time. Bye.